Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to all my students. Uh, this is the second lecture in for the topic or the subject in NPTEL which is project management and as you know I am Raghunandan Sen Gupta trying to cover all the details of project management as a course. So continuing from the last lecture where we left, um, uh, we discussed uh, different type of books we are going to consider. We very briefly even though I did not show in my slides we considered the different type of, of concept we will cover. Then we uh, went into the definition of uh, what is a project and how it is different from the production concept of view from the engineering point of view, where the main emphasis in the project was one of its kind only concept the work has to be done. And I did give a uh, 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 feel of to the audience that what can be the different type of projects related to building a dam, related to building a bridge, trying to come up with a marketing strategy, so on and so forth. And then also I mentioned that two, two different concepts of per CPM, just mentioned the names, obviously I will come to those later on. And then uh, I meant, uh, told that how QJERT, the concept of loops which is basically the queuing, queuing jert would be used in trying to basically find out the concept of how projects which are complicated can be done. So continuing with that same flavor, so I will I'll, I'll go into the more details of theory and then come into the problems later on. To the two schools of project management are basically one in school emphasizes the methods and the techniques for planning and controlling a project. So, planning and controlling on the job project, if you remember in my first class, it was basically mentioned. Uh, I did repeat it quite few number of times is that your main concern is try to finish the project within a stipulated time. And so, your time concept is important and then later on if we consider the concept of, of resource and budgetary constraints, it has also a, a separate implication for the project. So, this can be referred as I mentioned for the first school where emphasis is on methods and techniques. This is can be referred to the task perspective way of trying to handle and the other emphasis is basically trying to analyze the human relationship and this can be referred to as the organization perspective. So, our main focus is not from the second point of view is mainly from the first point of view where it is most task focused and how the task or the activities are related. And we try to basically utilize different type of simple quantitative techniques in order to solve the problems in the area of project management and try to understand how project management can be utilized. So, the method of project management from the point of view of the first concept where activities, tasks are more important or are the focus. So, we will consider what is the scope of the project management and the concept of the risk how risk concept is, is brought into the picture. I did mention in the first class the concept of risk which is there. Then we will consider the work breakdown structure rather than considering the overall micro level of each and every activities we will consider the overall picture on a micro macro level. We will consider the cost estimation, how internal rate of return, how the expected values are considered. We will consider the Gantt chart. And then later on as I mentioned that we will go into the concept of PERT. Now here is the first time that I am, I am basically going to the details of what PERT is. So PERT basically means the program evaluation review technique that is based on the network with some concept of stochastic activity duration. Stochastic activity duration means the time duration is not fixed. So there is a pessimist time, there is an optimist time, there is a so called median and a mean time and we try to basically analyze the overall project time duration from the PERT perspective. And what is the duration of the time uh, we will also consider that and how it is brought into the picture we will consider that also. In the critical path method 
it is basically concerned with determining the optimal duration of the project where the duration of each single activity is known with certain um, with, with without any uncertainty so there is a fixed time so obviously there would be some some difference in the pert and the cpm concept but we'll slowly consider that how the concept of pert and cpm can be utilized separately depending on time of for the activities or time for the set of activities are non deterministic or stochastic and deterministic after we finish the pert and cpm if you uh, remember we, we i did mention about q jert jert and the name of allen pritzker i did mention just once in my first class as 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 i was going through the syllabus so basically we will consider the generalized evaluation review technique and how generalized evaluation review technique is different from PERT and CPM. I, I, we will highlight that also and try to solve simple problems. So now um, uh, what, what I want to mention before I go into the next slide is that I, I did mention a few minutes back is that in the concept of PERT and CPM the concept of time duration means stochastic and, and deterministic is one of the main, main difference between the concept of of, of PERT and CPM such that once we consider them you will understand what is the differences and how they can be taken into consideration for different projects where time duration is deterministic or whether the time duration is non-deterministic from the point of view of the project. So, there has been a changing philosophy of the concept of project management starting from when it was basically conceived the project. So, in generally um, we will just go through the flow of the discussion and then come into the problem solving of project management as such. So, initial focus was on, on trying to obtain a co control through more detailed planning and monitoring of each and every activities of the projects or the project as such and trying to basically finish the project within time without laying much stress on say for example, what would be the or what were the implication of trying to basically finish the work on time and in its and its implication on the budgetary and the resource constraints which the the, the set of persons or the project manager uh, did face when he or she tried to finish up the project within a stipulated time. So, the project project uh, present focus has changed from more from from in, in, into the area of human relationship cultural issues, but as I mentioned we would not consider those for our, or our studies because our main, main focus would be to try to understand the different type of quantitative techniques which are utilized in the area of project management mainly in the area of PERT and CPM. Risk management is also nowadays considered in a very important and, and aspect of project management and it is considered that the risk management can be one of the main tools are how you try to analyze different type of projects as that you can have a perspective that for different type of quantitative techniques which you use to solve the project if you can basically lay more stress on the area of, of trying to analyze the risk from the perspective of the project it basically gives you a much better picture than how things can be planned to basically meet the requirement on the project in the best possible way. Now, the concept of risk which I mentioned that you may have learned risk from the, from the point of view of statistics probability, you may have learned the concept of risk from the finance perspective whatever it is, but generally the risk is considered as some sort of loss or a negative worth which basically accrues from taking that decision. So, our main focus would be to reduce the overall risk or the negative worth to the maximum possible extent such that we are inclined to take that decision where the risk for that project or where the risk for the decision gives is the least such that when we can consider different type of projects from the point of view of the maximum return that gives us certain results which is fine because we I want to get the maximum worth is definitely a very good policy. Another way of trying to analyze a, a decision making process or, or trying to compare different projects would be basically rather to concentrate on, on the projects such that we are able to take a decision on a project such that the overall risk is minimized. So, uh, basically there are two different ways how you try to analyze the problem. So, brief history as I mentioned uh, for project management, uh, it was basically in the area of, of space craft design where the concept of uh, project management came out, but to, to give a very, very brief um, outline of that. 
uh, I would definitely request the, the readers to have a look at the history of project management because it may not be possible for me to go into the details of what are the historical perspective of project management, but I will just give you two or three bullet points in, in this area. So, development of the network of scheduling techniques or precedent diagrams and this concept started in the 1950s and the breakthrough came through developing of the US Polaris rocket. So, basically if you go into the YouTube or basically go into the Polaris um, uh, study of Polaris, how it was developed, you will, you will understand that how project management was used in the development of the Polaris rocket in a very big way. So, basically that can be considered as the, the, the work uh, or as the project based on which project management as a concept basically came, came into the focus. Independently the critical path method. So, if you remember just in the last slide I mentioned about PERT and CPM. So, independently CPM technique was developed by, by in the US by DuPont uh, while exploring potential application of the newly acquired Univac computers. So, basically where different type of computers have to be uh, scheduled in such a way that the processing power can be utilized whether in different type of series or, or parallel combinations there the concept of project management uh, critical path method came to the picture. So, critical path method is a type of project management such that independently through the concept of, of a Polaris uh, rocket or independently through the um, work of, of DuPont, this concept of project management really came into the forefront. So, where it, its net worth of utilizing a project management concept was really appreciated by, the, by the, both the scientific community as well as by the people who are trying to utilize that in the practical scheme of things. So, importance of the project management with respect to the cost and the sh and schedule systems criteria for performance measurement, it is important to know two important principles for project management which are it basically breaking the project scope down to the manageable unit or the units which you can manage such that you can either look into the micro level of things or in the macro level of things and controlling the progress using earned value concept. So, the earned value concept to be very simple we will try to basically find out that what is the net worth or what is the value which is basically being, being, being accrued based on the decision you are going to take. So, it is basically need not be the only the expected value, it can be basically the expected value considering all the different scheme of things, how you be, try to analyze the cost perspective considering the, the, the rate of returns which are there, considering the, the, the time value of money. So, all these things would be considered, but in a very simplistic notion. So, as I mentioned um, in the first class, the concept of, of expected value and the time IRRs, so those would be considered either on a standalone basis or collectively such so that they give you a much better view of how the project management concept can be utilized to get the maximum benefit. Another important achievement for project management community was the development of, of, of PMI or the project management scheduling concept. So, the first bit was published in 1987 and later revised in in 2008. So, there they try to consider different concept of project management techniques as that they give you a very simple way of how you try to analyze a project rather than going to the detailed quantitative techniques of trying to solve it using op optimization tools and so on and so forth. So, the, in the ANSI standard and the servers and, and, and serves it as a major reference document for good practices in the project management and all the, the different ideas which are discussed in that book are considered as a as as the tool or based on which the project projects or project management can be analyzed. So, obviously, rather than going to the detailed qualitative techniques, I will try to basically analyze the problem from the quantitative techniques as such. So, as you remember we had mentioned that nowadays organization focus is the main thrust area, but we will try to minimize it to the maximum possible extent and try to basically cover the project management from the point of view of the quantitative concepts. So, hence today it is equally important to address how can you motivate the project personnel to collaborate and to develop ownership of those set of persons who are trying to basically work on the projects as that the overall contribution of those set of persons is the maximum such that considering the maximum utilization on the project 
um, uh, management concept from the quantitative view, you can also align them in the area of how the human beings can basically be motivated to give the maximum benefit. Hence, team building and team composition has become an important factor in trying to analyze different areas of project management as such. Continuing with, with uh, my main emphasis of risk management, so why risk management is important? Risk management is today is also considered important, um, is considered important for a successful implementation of a project from the project man management perspective. So, risk assessment has to be done and contingencies have to be, to be allocated such that if any concept or techniques which is being utilized for the project management point of view, if it gives you a huge amount of risk from the point of view of so called loss, I am using the word loss in a very general sense, if it is used, then one can be sure that those concept of risk management which is trying to utilize, where the risk management concept can be used to decrease the overall risk perspective of a, of a project. So, those techniques would definitely be used much in, in a much better way than those techniques where the risk perspective is not considered in that big way. It is important to forecast as accurately as possible all the potential deviations in the project and to provide adequate contingencies against them such that the overall variations. So, again I am using the word variation for the first time which we generally known is basically the standard deviation in from the very simple concept of probability and statistics. So, we try to basically find out how the deviations and the, de and the overall the, um, the, the movement from the so called mean value or the median value of the idea of projects what we want to implement. It can be the, the resource allocation, it can be the time allocations. They are considered in such a way that the variations are minimized. They may not be 0, but they are minimized to the maximum possible extent. In spite of efforts from our sides, cost and schedule overruns still happen. So, obviously, if costs, schedules and budget are there and if there are, there are overflow, overflow based on that, so obviously, it has a negative impact on the project which you are trying to implement. So, obviously, trying to find out what are important whether the costs are important, whether the scheduling of the jobs are important, whether the time factor is important, whether the resource is important. So, once we decide how we are going to do, obviously, we will try to utilize different techniques accordingly. Now, having said that, uh, let us be a little bit more practical that trying to analyze a project from all the point of view at the same time may not be possible. So, what is, is best is that trying to basically utilize the concept of project management where time constraint is more important and we try to basically find out the optimum time, uh, optimal time based on which we can finish up the jobs and how they can be rescheduled or crashed such that the, the overall perspective of trying to finish the project is, is done in the, in the minimum possible time. So, as we do that obviously, we slowly we then come bring into the picture the concept of resources concept. So, obviously, resource concept could have also been taken as the, as, as the first priority and then considering the cost perspective we could have taken that, but we, we generally would follow the principle which is generally uh, studied in the books and try to basically analyze the problem from the point of view of time and then the cost structures would be coming into the picture. Thus, rather than focus Contingency planning is more important. So, contingency planning in the sense that if time is a constraint that how the resources can be utilized in different sequences as that we get, get the maximum benefit from that. And there you will see that how the risk perspective would come into the picture. So, reason being as I mentioned that risk being a risk and variations are normal and cannot be fully done away with, so avoided. Thus, thus, is important that we develop project management competence to manage the risk and the variation as they occur and try to reduce them to the maximum possible extent. So, hence many organizations have realized that too tight control prevents creativity. So, trying to basically give some leverage also gives you some uh, leverage of trying to basically reduce the time as well as trying to basically reduce the cost doing it in such a way that the overall risk perspective would be taken into consideration rather than only concentrating on the time or only concentrating on the budget constraints. 
So, thus less focus on detail plans can encourage creativity and lead to better and more effective project execution and project management techniques being utilized. So, what is new in project management? We will consider later on, but I just wanted to mention it. Considering all these researchers have focused on one new approach, which has found wide applications in the development on information systems in trying to basically find out the concept of agile project management. But obviously, that would come as a later part in, a, in our discussion. We will basically consider more the concept of, of project management as, as a such and the techniques which we are going to consider, so that it gives a overall view that how project management can be done. So, agile project management is a method of project management applying a team approach. So, basically the input of different individuals are collectively considered such so that the overall creativity is in increased to the maximum possible extent. The course of the project is allowed to change rapidly and frequently and this is obtained by strong focus on the stakeholders in involvement and communication. So, in project uh, agile project management or environment projects are the business. So, while in the traditional environment the triple cons constraint of scope resources and schedule is the main focus. So, basically you consider in a in agile project management you consider in a very in a very broad focus the, the concept of project in such a way that the concept of scopes or the times or the resources and the schedules which are there in the in the in the initial um, uh, discussion of project management which would be our main focus. So, that is done away with. So, we collectively they are considered in such a way that the concept of project is basically considered from a holistic point of view, where it is more of a business and all these things are considered in, 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 in a ag agglomeration fashion. In an agile strategy, the project manager takes on an outward facing perspective to facilitate the integration of the project to the business, such that the overall focus is the business, such that the project is dovetailed into the overall scheme. Focus in agile project management is on delivering business results rather than staying with present boundaries as the original project boundaries will quickly diverge from the business reality as uncertainty environment becomes much more relevant as days, days go by, which means that the concept of risk should be taken in a such a way that we will consider the risk to be an integral part of the overall system and try to analyze the, the project from the risk perspective, from the business perspective, considering everything is, is, is uh, dynamic such that not only cost, not only schedule, not only resources are considered, but more rather than all the things are considered in a one go as relevant for the project from the business perspective or the project as a, as a standalone basis which we are trying to work on. So, good examples of agile project management would be in the software industry agile project management is used applying a method called scrum. In scrum the basic development unit is a sprint. So, basically we consider different type of, of agile project management concept in, in and technology development in trying to basically for the software development, but rather our focus would be for the solving problems would be more on the project management from the manufacturing perspective. So, in, in agile project management from the software industry, each sprint is preceded by a planning meeting where the tasks of the sprints are determined and they are basically identified and they are clubbed together in such a way the overall project is met from the business perspective as such. During a sprint, the project team will create parts of the finished product. Scrum teams consist of three core rules. So, what are the core rules are the product owner representing the voice of the customer. So, he or she gives the feedback what the customer wants and based on that the overall development of the project is done. You see for example, if the project the customer wants cost reduction or if the customer wants more 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 different type of, of facilities, different type of add-ons to be there or say for example, different type of functions to be there obviously. The, the, the manager who is looking after the overall project from the point of view of customer would give his or her feedback such that they are considered into the project in a very realistic sense. So, there is a development team result, is responsible for delivering this finished parts uh, to the final products. So, obviously, the development team would get 
the feedback of the customers and they would basically act as, as a liaison team such that they would get the feedback from the customers as I mentioned and they would try to basically get the feedback from the production line or the from the technology development line and try to basically bridge the gap between the customer and the, and the main main supplier on the main product development such that the mismatch is reduced to the maximum possible extent considering all overall business perspective such that the cost perfect perfect uh, perspective the time perspective the schedule perspective everything can be taken at one go the scrum master basically facilitating the process and uh, is, is, is given in charge of trying to basically bring uh, a semblance in how the customer focus and the, the technology focus can be bring into the picture. So, as that as I mentioned that he or she as, as a team leader trying to basically ensures the dovetailing of the customer requirement and the technology team leader development team which is there. So, project success must be defined in terms of elements that characterize the very nature of the project. For example, time, adherence to schedule, adherence to the, the deadlines which are there are met. So, the cost adherence to budgets to the resource constraints which are there are also met such that we are able to take both the time and the cost perspective. The quality functions, what are the quality features of the product, the functionality of the product and how each and every every part of the product meets the demand of the customer and that has to be looked into. The concept of customer satisfaction from the point of view of utilizing that product, from the point of view of trying to get the, the cost of the product uh, transferred and being, being less as if the customer is able to buy or whether the customer is able to get the feedback from the customer service personal in case of any problems are, are also taken into consideration. Project success follows a, a, a quadruple constraint considered basically from the point point of agile and production or agile project management being time. So, time is important as time was the only focus in, in the area of PERT and CPM. Then the second point is basically the cost perspective. So, the cost perspective is done in such a way that it also considers the concept of, of, of crashing of jobs as we will consider more in, in the area of a PERT and CPM. The quality and the functionality which may be very qualitative in nature still is, is, is brought into the picture. So, that is basically the main focus of the customer because customer may be willing to pay some extra amount of money for a feature which is very important for him or her. And main and, and the first and the last part is basically satisfaction level. So rather than basically able to deliver a product, it also means that what is the quality feature, qualitative features such that the customer satisfaction is met to the maximum possible extent is also considered. So at one go, we are able to consider the agile project management, the concept of time, cost. Uh, the quality and the functionality and the cli client satisfaction such that if you are able to consider all of them, the project can be implemented in the best possible manner. So, with this I will end the second lecture and uh, as we proceed, so I, I would request my, my, my students and the people who are taking the course to please refer to the books which I referred because as such it would be very difficult for me to basically give in each and every point from the book, but I will definitely request them that if they go through this concept given in the book from all the references which are there, it will definitely give them a very uh, good feel that how project management was taken up in the early years and how, has uh, how it has developed such that he or she is in a much better frame of mind as we start the discussion of the problems in the later uh, classes. Thank you very much.